Well, at this point, because with the first two Iron Man movies and then Avengers and now doing Iron Man 3, there's this, there's obviously the sense of continuity. So I see the same faces, you know, every so often, more often than not. And we're kind of on the same meditation of this uh, story that Stan Lee came up with that was essentially a second tier superhero. Um, but there's something timely about it, and I think that uh, it wound up being. Uh, I don't know, interesting and entertaining to people. I think part of what really made it work was uh, it was tangible, you know, and um, and now uh, legacy, uh, the the human beings who make all this tech and moving forward, it's like you can you can reach out as we go from movie to movie, and you're feeling more and more like you're seeing something that's become part of the collective unconscious. Like in on a certain level, this stuff is is real, you know, and it's also kind of feasible technologically. So I think that's what made it successful, is, um, is we had a, a group of talented people, and we did something that kind of bridged a gap between the unfeasibility of most superhero uh, genre movies and the kind of movies like, uh, I don't know, a James Bond or a Mission Impossible or, or whatever that, uh, that, are, that are grounded in things that we think could happen. The nice thing about uh, Tony Stark is that um, he doesn't even take his own arc that seriously because he's uh, he's he's falls so far from where he was, but he needed to. So I think people uh, relate to that life lessons part of it, you know. The relationship with Pepper is obviously the kind of center of the movie, and uh, contrary to my own designs, it seems like this time I'm much less thinking about. Um, you know, how do I come off and this and that. I'm thinking about the other characters. I'm thinking about all the things. There's kind of a checklist of stuff that we always thought maybe we should do. One of them was we always felt like Tony and Rhodey should be at Neptune's Net because it's up the road from where Tony lives and it's a biker bar. And we thought, what if they're two kind of bikers at a bar um, type deal? So we, and John and I, and then Shane and I, and, and even Joss has contributed uh, to this, obviously, is that. Um, there was always this kind of uh, uh, Christmas list that we never got to execute because story or time or money or whatever got in the way. And it seems like without it being convoluted, a lot of those uh, wishes are kind of coming true in Iron Man 3. I was surprised and delighted and obviously very much in favor of him uh, directing this. And as John has uh, moved on into other realms of activity and had his other successes and, and other uh, experiences, it's interesting to see that now it was Shane and I reaching out to John um, to kind of remind us of, uh, of where he was heading the ship to begin with. So, But the great thing about this story is, it is uh, it's dramatic and it's, um, it's, it's pretty deep and, and dark at some points, but it also is uh, very quintessentially Shane Black. Uh, I love movies where there are things that you forgot were even set up that pay off. Uh, it's like, what's in it for me? I start thinking in those terms for my co-stars, and what is it that keeps this interesting for Gwyneth? And we've addressed that this time, because she has a pretty remarkable arc for a um, a love interest kind of female heroine in, in this sort of film. So that's probably one of the things I'm most excited about. Um, you know, without giving it away. Uh, Let's just say she has a she has a pretty incredible arc this time. And Guy Pierce, who plays Killian, has really come out of the gate, and I think is going to uh, remind people why he's one of our uh, great uh, national treasures. Uh, uh, he's he's on loan from Australia, but he's a great American national treasure. I really felt that the the big idea here was he's so central to the story. He is aside from Rhodey, he's the closest person to Tony, and because John and I are so close, and because everybody has such a familiarity with him that we thought he can't just come in and, and do what he used to do, which is shoot everyone else's coverage, maybe crack a joke, maybe just stand there and be this kind of non-entity. It was, uh, it was uh, a waste of talent. So this time we were wasting none of his talent. He's central to the story, and when he comes in, he just brings everyone to school because he has the freedom of not having to worry about what's on the call sheet. He's just someone coming in into, uh, coming into play and have a good time. So I think A for the fans, B for all of us who love him so much, C for Shane, D for the rest of the 
cast who has uh, either a direct experience with him or an understanding that he's kind of the, the grandfather of why we're all here anyway, uh, it was super important. And um, I think he'll probably wind up with some of the most touching and definitely the most uh, entertaining moments in the story. Uh, well, to me, it's the perfect balance of not too far and not, not far enough. Um, and again, a lot of this happens just by kind of like dialing in the servos as you get closer and closer to shooting and all of the great department heads we have. And everybody has a take on what should we do next. Um, I remember in the Extremis uh, series, at a certain point, Tony internalizes Extremis. And I was like, dude, that's where this has got to go. And it's not impossible that it could. But the other thing you always have to think is, how far is too far? At what point have you taken all your toys out and you've essentially burned out any possibility of ever having another one? At the same time, how do you want to make each one feel like it's definitive and you're not, uh, you're not keeping your best cards you know, um, on the table? Sir Ben brought the trifecta of an extremely accomplished artist who also came uh, with a lot of very strong ideas which were necessary and had to be implemented and then third, decided to absolutely cut loose and play in a sandbox like a improvisational five-year-old. And um, I think probably the most fun that I've had shooting the film has been watching what he's done that you never could have imagined would be scripted before they said rolling. So, and coming from me, who prides myself on off-the-cuff stuff, I guess that's saying a lot. So in a way, this movie would not have worked at all and, and would not be the movie it's going to be if Sir Ben hadn't done what he did.